up, y'all? It's Friday. Yes. Come on, SWV. We are down here. It's Friday. It's me, Erica. We're down here. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Let the diva know you stopped by. Hit the notification bell twice. Shout out to all the new subscribers, honey. We down here. What's going on? It's Friday. Um, the people are out here at the park. I don't know why so many people out here at the park look like they practicing for something. I don't know. I'm being nosy. So we down here. Yes, come on. Yes. They need to do a versus. Stop playing with me, SWV. And it's crazy because a lot of people keep saying these R&B girls don't have enough hits. Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? Whose fault that these girls don't have enough hits? We down here's a lot of people in the park. We down here. I don't know. It's only 654. I don't know why there's so many people in the park. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, so we down here. We don't have any much to talk about. Just a little things that happened yesterday. Today is 9-11. You know, the people are all days mattering. Everybody to death. I already hit somebody with a flag in their bio. All dates matter. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. But shout out to everybody. I hope everybody, ooh, come on, dollar. We found a dollar, honey. I hope that everybody is having a wonderful day by the time this video reaches you. So we're just down here, like I said. I took a day off yesterday, just needed a day off. I felt like, you know, I just really, really didn't have anything to talk about. I haven't watched the, I did watch Beverly Hills um, Housewives reunion. It was very, 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 very boring, honey. It was boring. It wasn't giving anything. Um... I don't know what they're going to do next year. Uh, Denise Richards has already quit. So I don't know what's going to happen next year. Denise, like no shade, but she can be replaced. It's no problem. But Kyle, I think we're tired of Kyle. I think we are tired of Kyle. She seems to be the Giselle of the group, like not really giving much, but still somehow the center of it all. And then um, speaking of Giselle, Hell, Ashley Darby is pregnant again, honey. That's the only shit I'm going to take. That's what she says in her... That Honey, Diva loves when she says that. Now that I got my baby, <laughs> that's the only crap I'm going to take. Girl, shut up. Now you and Sheila got you a baby each, honey. Sheila going to be down at the um at the county office saying it's her baby and she don't have it. And then you going to be... <laughs> Let me shut up. <laughs> that's not right. I'm sorry, Michael. I mean, I think Ashley knows everything that's going on with Michael. That's why she'd be looking like, is that true? And just let him say it's not true. And you know good and goddamn well that man is running around with a boyfriend and a wife. It's no sun out. It's, you know, San Francisco, if you haven't seen it, San Francisco is orange, honey. It's not orange over here, but it's just a lot of smoke. The weather Cast, the weather forecast says, you know, unhealthy air quality and this and that. You don't have your mask out now. You should have a mask, especially in California. There's a lot of smoke and stuff like that. Not in addition to a airborne, seem to be airborne virus. <laughs> I don't know if this is the walking dead or what, bitch, but um, a bird box out here or something. I was to get your survival kits together. I gotta get all that together. Anyway, so... I took a couple edibles earlier and I just know when they kick in. I just have every time I feel like every time somebody wants to call a meeting and make sure you have your cameras on. I'd be like, oh God, please. Can I just can I just enjoy these edibles in peace while I'm sitting here doing my work but bothering nobody? Child. What are we talking about? Tamar and David. I watched Marriage Boot Camp last night, the Secrets Revealed episode. Oh God. I'm so disappointed. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. I know y'all be sitting there like, Erica, you are so cynical about relationships. I've always been like that. Even, even, even in like, even in, even in like actively like, slow, oh, like I want a man, you know, even I still was like, man ain't shit. <laughs> Even in a male friendship with a man, with a cisgender man, heterosexual man, I could see the toxicity in it. Like, I can't even be friends with you crazy ass niggas. Because you guys are crazy. The whole thing is crazy. Anyway, it's 7 o'clock. So, yeah. So, I'm just looking at marriage boot camp last night. I'm looking at Tamar. I'm looking at Tory Lanez who came out. And not he didn't come out, but a, a, um, a text message he shared 
um, was shared with TMZ. I don't know who gave it to TMZ. I don't know. But like he sends her a text message to say, I'm, I'm sorry, I was drunk. And it's like... Be not, trust me, we ain't gonna stop. Head to the lights. Come on, Eve. Was that Eve? Oh, that's Kelly Rowland and Eve. Okay, that's cute. Um, how old is this song? 2007. Polo to Don. He produced this. Um, Sean Garrett. Oh, I remember this song. Okay, I remember that song. So anyway, so like I said, we don't have anything to talk about. Um, those are some of the things I just wanted to talk about real quick. Let's talk about it, I guess. I guess. So first thing, Tamar and David. David filed a restraining order against Tamar. And it's like all of these things, all of these things, I, everybody I have on my list, it's like, I know that we talk about relationships all the time. And I used to be on Facebook like, I'm so tired of talking about relationships that's how, like before i deleted my facebook page deleted or deactivated i don't know i don't even remember how to get into it. i'm a, i'm a, i guess i might have to show them all my shit before i um i get into i need some hand sanitizer i thought i brought some with me Child. what happened Yes. But anyways, like I said, I ate two at two little edibles. These infuse they're called infused gummies, but they have it's they're sour gummies, but they have the flavors. They have pineapple, green apple, grape, strawberry. It is they're so good. And they're like they're they're a perfect gummy. They're like squares, they're perfect gummy and then like sour and then sweet at the same time because some people make their gummies and they're too sweet i like a sour gummy to be sour i want it to be sour and then when i bite on it it's like sweet on the inside you know what i'm saying and um, some people make their their sour gummies too sweet i don't i don't like it but this is a brand they call infuse just uh just in f-u-z-e-d and they make the best gummies and um i sometimes i'd be eating them like oh girl these are these are edibles you're gonna be you're gonna be laid out in three hours girl you're gonna be laid out but yeah like talking about relationships i know i'm all over the place somebody said they somebody watched um what what um what review was it somebody watched some review and they were like you are all over the place honey welcome <laughs> welcome <laughs> girl i be all over the place i used to call it add conversation i go from one thing to the next that's why twitter works for me that's why i couldn't be on facebook all the time because my thoughts are very um abstract they're not linear at all so as i think of something if i want to say it i could just tweet it and it's like because there's no really organization unless somebody goes to your page where your tweet falls in the midst of your conversation in somebody's timeline it it doesn't ha it doesn't have to have any context and and if somebody wants to get context they can you know go to your profile and look at y'all know how twitter works but that's why i love twitter because the way my brain works i need to get my thoughts out like blah blah blah, blah. that's how that's how i think i'll be thinking of the most random things and yeah i know i could put it in notes but i want to put it in on my damn twitter feed i remember like a long time ago i want to say like when i first joined twitter like 2009 and this um woman used to follow me um she followed me because her i was i was i was talking to this dude and apparently he had a girlfriend the whole time you know how they do and um so she started stalking me as a result and even even befriended an old friend of mine which was strange but anyway um of course yeah so she was stalking me so she used to say things like um Oh, you talk about the most random things like, you know, just criticizing the way that I tweet. Right. And it's so funny, like after all these years, how Twitter has just blown up and it's just exactly what that is. It's really to me a place for people who just have these random thoughts. I love how they started thread so that you can have a continuous thought and you can just thread it out. I love how they did that because people were really threading tweets and I'm glad that they they saw that and adjusted the application so that people can actually do that without having to go through a bunch of shit. Anyway, 
so yeah so she used to say she used to say things like she's out there tweeting um your tweets are like roller coasters good bitch put your seatbelt on or you gonna fly out that's all i could say <laughs> put your seatbelts on or you gonna fly out because it, it's a roller coaster we go up and down we talk about different things i go from one subject to the next you see i haven't talked about nothing i said i was gonna talk about yet i go to it and then something else comes to mind i just have add um conversation is what i call it so anyways we're talking about tamar and um relationships all everything i have to talk about is about a relationship um, I guess that's the only thing that we really do talk about the most are relationships. Somebody asked me to watch Love After Lockup or 90 Day Fiance. I think I think y'all have asked me to watch both of those. And I said to myself, I watched the I watched a clip of Love After Lockup because I think that comes on We and I was watching Marriage Boot Camp. Um, and so it was like a little like a little promo, a little ad for it. And I was like, I can't watch this. I cannot watch this. I cannot watch this. <laughs> I cannot watch this. There's so many times I think, and it's, I don't think that there's anybody who can say they haven't made, can you say that you haven't made one not so smart decision that did not serve you outside of your character as it relates to a relationship? I don't think anybody is immune to that. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody is immune to having have having made a not so smart decision in a relationship or in sin's case overlooking. Like I was thinking about that the other day like I was I was taking a shower and I was thinking like if I found out that someone that I was in a relationship with was abusing their animal in that way what would you do what would you do is that enough to leave a relationship like okay this person is rationalizing why they should abuse their dog in this way i don't even want to say it abuse their dog in this way and think that there's some logic behind it where like some other people were saying in the comments there are other animals made for that purpose right you would take the dog to a wherever they need to go and they can you know maybe they have the dog make a female friend like there are ways that that you can what would you do what would you do what can you imagine what sin thought like bitch did he just did he just do what I think he did? And then what do you do? Like, what do you do, y'all? What would you do if you found out the person you were with today was abusing their animal in, in the same way that Joe has described himself and what we saw in them do in them documents that were uh, apparently released by Rocky? I'm going to get to Sin after I get to Tamar. We're going to get to everybody today. But what would you do? We could just finish talking about Sin and Joe. Sin Santana got down to the Instagram, cussing everybody out, talking about, you know, don't F with my family. I gave this information to somebody I considered a sister who later Joe revealed that she was talking about Rocky. I don't know how, I guess a lot of people, a lot of people like I've done it after I was, in an abusive situation i talked to the person again i allowed that person to come to my home i al i allowed you know i did you know you do that like tahiri you know interacting with joe rocky still interacting with joe after he was so violent to her and then for sin to have befriended rocky to the point where she is referring to her as someone i thought of like a sister then she releases these this vi this recording of you and Joe and then these documents that were supposed to be used on the set of Love and Hip Hop. Um, what? <sighs> she came down here talking shit or whatever and I guess it wasn't to Joe's liking because Joe came out and was like, well, I asked Sin to get down there. And basically, he was really honest and was like, I asked Sin to come down to the TV and tell y'all this. But I want to I wanna let Joe button. Joe, Joe, um, I, 
I don't I don't think that her coming out saying that you're a great father and you great and you're a great co-parent and all this other stuff that doesn't negate from the fact that um, you're not the best partner. You haven't been the best partner in your relationships. Being a partner is a role and being a parent is a role. And you may think that you being a great father, like I said down on Twitter this morning, Sin can have a shirt on that says number one dad and Lexington right here with my dad is the best dad ever with a rocket shooting towards some, some clouds. But that does not mean that you weren't a good partner. And I, and I see so many women fall for that shit. You see a dude that's a great dad and assume that he's going to make a great husband. And it don't be that. Everybody that makes... And, and you could see a woman being a good mother and she may not make a great partner. And that's just what it is. That's just what it is. So Sin can come down here and say, Joe, Joey is a great father. He's a great this and all of that and all of that. But that does not mean that he didn't drag you. It does not mean that that didn't happen in your partnership with each other. Um, and so she came out with another video after. I guess it wasn't to his liking. And even then, and I'm thinking about it to myself. This man was rude to you, disrespected you, lied to you. These are your words. You can't believe nothing he says. He lied about everything. But you down here rallying for him, saying that he's a good father. And when you don't do it to how he likes it, he comes out and makes a video. And then you turn around and make another video. What are you doing, Cynthia? What are you doing? You down here rallying for a man who wasn't the best person to you just because he's a good father? Girl, no. Those are two different things. Like I said, honey, Joe, you can wear the damn number one dad gold charm around your neck. That doesn't mean you wasn't a fucked up partner to the women that you partnered with in your life. Period. That's all I got to say about that. Tory Lanez with his raggedy ass, he came out and he said that he apologized to Megan. Well, there was a text message. Like I said, TMZ released a text message. TM TMZ released a text message and it said, I'm sorry. I know you're probably never going to talk to me again, but I'm sorry. I'm watching this white man with this trash picker around my car. He's looking, I think he's disgusted because there's a lot of trash in the in the area. So maybe he's like disgusted about that, but there's a lot of trash around here. He came out and with a text message that said, you know, I'm sorry. I know you're probably not going to talk to me again. Uh, nigga, what? Yeah, I mean, she might talk to you again. I mean, people talk to their abusers again. And that just, that's just how it goes. And like people are like, why are you around Joe in his face talking about Tahiri? People talk to their abusers again. They really do. I feel like Tory Lanez is a piece of shit because, you know, he didn't have to come out and defend himself because he had a whole group, a whole collective group of people defending him and villainizing, villainizing her and making her seem like what happened to her, she somehow deserved it. You never came out and spoke up for her and said, no, 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 y'all leave her alone. This is all on me. You allowed that to happen. You allowed the victim of your rage, your drunken rage, you allowed the victim to continue to be victimized. You're no good. You're a no good person. And like everybody said, oh, maybe his, this, gonna, this is going to be canceled, his career. No, he'll be fine. Like I said, men don't, nothing happens to men when they abuse women. They don't. They go on to have great, beautiful careers. They go on to make careers so great that they can actually leave the United States and go reside in Bali while there's 15 women saying that they've sexually been sexually assaulted by this man, Russell Simmons. Hello. So nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens to these people. I mean, your president has admitted to assaulting women. There are women who have come out and said these things and he is the president. Nothing happens to men when they abuse women.
Joe does not want to speak on nothing he's done with these women, how, but he wants Sin to come down here and say how great of a father he is. How great of a father. See, that's the man, y'all. See him? That's him. There's a bunch of trash, though. That's why I, that he's probably mad because it's a bunch of trash all around. But that's the man. He on camera today. He got your ass on camera. Hello, white city worker. Um. Anyway, so yeah, you coming down here. You got Joe. Get down there. He admitted he was like, you know, I told her to get down there. Don't put any makeup on. And like the whole setup. Go down there and say some good things about me. And... You know, I don't know. That's all I got to say about Sin and Joe um, and Tori and Tori Lanes. Like I said, you allowed the girl to come down here and you didn't say nothing, nothing to nobody. You let everybody say what they want. The victim had to come out and explain herself and the perpetrator still has not spoken. And the only time you, you actually came out and said anything is when somebody said your numbers were down. That's what you cared about more. You cared more about your business than you cared about who you victimized. And that's crazy and like i said nothing's gonna happen to tory lanes he's trash he's been trash he's just been trash and he's going to continue to be trash and there's not going to be any consequence for his trash behavior so he's going to continue to be trash and that's just what it is that's how that's how it goes tamar and david so david is playing this game where tamar i guess is violent and so he got a restraining order out, out on her and then he made some video where he looks crazy as hell to me i feel like he's doing he's on a monique samuels tour he's doing damage control he's doing damage control before this this show what is her show called tamar's new show I can't remember the name of it, but he's coming out with his damage control videos. And then you put out a restraining order on a woman who was just in a mental institution for attempting to end her life. And she's still that violent to where you want to put a restraining order. Why is she so violent? What is going on? Is this behavior that wasn't corrected in childhood? And this is the reason why Tamar acts out. I did watch the first episode of her show. And I don't know what's going on with Tamar. I don't know why she has this woman around her who is supposed to be doing these dreams or analyzing her dreams for her. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I just don't understand why this woman is following her around. I don't get it. I just don't understand that. And... It's weird because this African, this Nigerian man is saying that he's super duper Christian. And so he doesn't want this stuff in his house. And I think this is Tamar's house, if I'm not mistaken. But whatever, you, whatever. So he put a restraining order out on Tamar. And like I said, to me, it feels like a, it's, it's a scam. Like, let me put a restraining order out on her so that we can make it seem like something that you know when when all the tapes come out when they show because i don't you don't know what they're gonna show you don't know what they're gonna show and like um was it charlemagne who said it charlemagne said you need to have your contract needs to say you have final say in the in the final edit um and a lot of people don't so you can you can't control what they say about you but the 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 tape or the video is there yeah they can splice it up to create their own story but i think david is doing damage control that's what i really think he is i don't think he's to be trusted i asked in july when she attempted suicide i asked was he abusive and controlling because I watched Stephanie Santiago on lip service. You know, she's one of the co-hosts of Angela Yee's um, lip service. And she was addicted to uh, Percocets and Xanax and addicted. But her addiction, and she's triggered by this relationship with this man that she's been in a relationship with almost five years and he triggers her into depression. And Angela and L'Oreal held, the, the, held such a... A wonderful space for Stephanie to be honest and transparent about her addiction and what triggers her and they were just like you know what he's not good for you there they she was saying he would even get he would even get me the drugs you know and it's like you have men around women who will send them 
into a mental state. And that's the reason why I asked was Tamar being abused or controlled by David. I asked that in July and that's around the time where like all that stuff like Megan, T Tamar, all that stuff happened around the same time. And I asked, was David controlling and abusive? Now, I've never seen them, like, interact. The, the, the only time that I've seen them really interact is that episode where somebody was getting married. It was Tamar's birthday, and somebody proposed. Somebody was proposed to. I think it was um, the sister um, who was married to Gabe. What's her name? The one that always does like this. What's her name? T tr um, t tr um, Trina, Trina, no, the one that's uh, that she drinks, <laughs> she was on Sister Circle. You know who I'm talking about. I'm sure y'all put it in the thing. Um, Trina, I think that's her name because the other one is Tawanda, and Tracy is the one with the biker. Isn't, isn't her um, man like a biker? She'd be on bikes and stuff. And did she like do a whole season of the Braxons without them because they didn't want to film? That shit is a mess. Um, but that's the only time I've ever seen him like really interact. And I think that was like at the beginning of their relationship. I remember Tamar not wanting him to be alone with the other men because of, I don't know. She was trying to control, I guess, how he saw her family or whatever. So I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on, but, um, I really think that Tamar falls into these relationships with, people and a lot of women do and it's not just tamar so when we're talking about these people that's another thing i kind of wanted to say when we're talking about these tvs these are people who live the, who live their lives publicly and their and their situations can be used as teaching moments teachable moments right they can be used to say here's an example of this happening with men and women and Tamar is not the only person. Sin is not the only person. Um, Tahiri is not the only person. Nicole Young is not the only person. Um, Ashley Darby is not the only woman in a relationship with a man who sleeps with other men and is okay with it. But acting like, oh no, I don't know. My, you know, Ashley is okay with that. She knows what she married, who she married. She knows what he does, and she's just not in a space to say this is how our our my marriage is set up with Michael and you know like she said that she um I know I'm all over the place like Ashley said she related to Will and Jada and that whole situation she said she related to it so much so is there something in your relation where you have an open marriage and your husband is allowed to do what he, he wants but you live and you're socialized to not for that not to be okay, so you keep it to yourself, right? Those There's other people like that. There are other people like Tamar, who was the youngest in the family, didn't really get a lot of discipline, was disciplined probably at the wrong times, was told to shut up when she wanted to speak, was silenced when she wanted to speak. There's a lot of women like Tamar. Tamar is not one person having this experience without anyone else ever having that experience. So when we talk about these people, oh, you talk about these celebrities and celebrities and celebrities. No, these are just public figures whose life examples we can use and talk and discuss because they're not the only ones going through these things, right? So I feel, to con to in conclusion, I feel with Tamar and David that David is doing damage control. He said something about Tamar, um, tearing up his Rolls Royce. Well, we saw that in the text message that Jason shared the other day that, you know, she tore up, she had a bruise on her arm. She, she tore up some shit in his car. Um, and, I, and a lot of the times, you know, I think in, and like in Tahiri's case, like I feel like Tahiri's aggressive towards men because she's been abused by men. So I feel like, you know, after, after so many times and does, is that an excuse? No, but it's a reason. It's a reason. You know what I'm saying? And when you have been manipulated, gaslit and everything, anything can trigger you if you haven't done the work. And I'm like with her last night on uh, marriage boot camp, she said she hasn't talked to Vado. We're going to get to marriage boot camp. 
we close out Tamar, Tory Lane saying, Ashley, you know, she got a baby coming on the way or whatever. Let's talk about marriage boot camp. So marriage boot camp was the secrets revealed. And it did come out that Votto was okay with what he did to Tahiri. He was justified. And the fact that everybody in the house was like, Votto is a good guy. They didn't see anything wrong with it because a lot of people in black, brown, you know what? Because I see white girls dealing with abuse too by their white count, by their white male cisgender partners. I see it. So it's not, I think that violence, some level of violence in a relationship, it's not just black people, but I'm black. So we talking to black and brown people, you know what I'm saying? But I, I feel that women are socialized to accept abuse and to, to look past it or you know to look past the push or to kind of find a justification as to why and everybody in that house seemed to be okay with what happened to Tahiri and probably because they saw the progression of the situation they saw them arguing they saw them being disrespectful to each other you know Votto came in and called Tahiri a thirst bucket from the beginning so he was already being disrespectful and I think you know I think that there are some women who have been abused so much, whether it's been physically, verbally, emotionally, that coming in contact with any man and when they get a glimpse of what they've experienced with another man, they get defensive. And I've I've had that experience before where I I could see like, oh, you, I can already tell what you're trying to do. That's why it's beneficial for older men to go with younger women because younger women haven't had the experience of that type of man yet. They haven't. So they can't really tell until they're, it's already, until they're already in it. Like, oh, this person is being verbally abusive. This person is like trying to break me down. This person is trying to break my spirit. They don't recognize it because they've never seen it before. You cannot recognize what you haven't seen. You understand? So... When you come in contact with a man who is like, oh, you playing these games? Fuck that. You get defensive. You might get disrespectful and you might get violent. Right? I think Tamar is, is a product of that. And I'm not making an excuse, but I'm, I'm saying there's a reason why women get violent with men. Um, especially if they feel triggered. Um, and then also... And then that some people will turn around and be like, oh, you know, she was violent. And so to justify the violence against her when she was really just defending herself. Um, you know, um, they all in the house were okay. They were like, no, Votto shouldn't leave. I don't think that Votto should have left to the point where he had to be, he had to go to another hotel. Maybe they could have put him in a different room. Like, okay, well, you guys are clearly not going to be next to each other. I don't feel like he should have been removed out of the house. Like, I just don't think that. Um, and I think we sh like, well, Dr. Ish said, you know, you don't, you don't pile on the mess when somebody has already gone through something so traumatic. You don't pile it on with, you know, you were, you were part of that. You know, you had a hand, you had a hand in that. You had a hand in the progression of violence. Um, now, you know, he overpowered you. They showed, um, Dr. Ish showed how he was on her chest, like pushing her chest down. Um, and everybody, every no one thought that Votto should have left. They didn't see anything wrong. They showed a little bit more of it. They showed it in slow motion. And everybody was just sitting there. And I think that... And another thing, there's another, there's another variable to that. Where when you see a man being, or a man and a woman fighting, you don't know if that's what they do. Like, do they fight like that? You know, you don't know. And so sometimes you'll be like, oh, I don't know if I need to get involved. Because that's that might be their relationship. No matter how toxic it is, that might be how they get down. You know what I mean? That might have been a factor where we were all saying, you know, oh my God, none of the men stood up for her. None of the men reacted in a way. And maybe they were sitting there like, oh, is that what they do? Because they real, they real verbally abusive to one another. Maybe that's how they fight. But 
typically stuff like that is done in private so for him to be in an outward display of that he had to feel like there was some support i don't know why i feel like that like i feel like when you're abusing people abuse happens like in the shadows you know what i'm saying and for you to be that mad to where you completely lost control that on television so you must have you must have under because he sat there like bitch i know you didn't don't make me hurt you i think that's what he said but it's like you had to feel that you were going to be supported in some way that or not get in or there were there will be no consequences for your behavior for you to have done that in a public forum with cameras around you know what i mean and then for his um lie detector test to come back saying that he um didn't see anything wrong with it or he meant it that's all you needed to know to hear he really i feel like something is hanging from my eye that's all you needed to know was that he um he meant it he meant it and they do mean it like Tory Lanez, you meant to shoot um, uh, Meg. You meant to shoot her. Twice. You shot her twice. You shot her twice. You meant to do it. And the only time you want to be vocal about anything is when somebody says your record, your streams have gone down. No, they haven't. That's what you want to come out and defend. You don't want to come out and defend the person that you victimized by mistake because you were too drunk you allowed her to get down to for her to come out and have to defend herself for her to have transphobic jokes against her oh she should she was she was a she's masculine and she's this and that and all of this stuff that and she had to come out and defend herself no you didn't you didn't even come out to defend yourself because you had enough men and women defending you you did you had enough men and women defending you like Votto. There's no way that you could have got up and did that and not think that you were going to have some support. Nobody abuses and starts fights with a woman with cameras around and just loses absolute control if you didn't feel like you were going to be supported in some way. And he was. He was supported. He was supported. In that house, he was supported. Dr. Ishan then made him get out. I don't think he could, I don't think he could, I don't think, first of all, we have to think like, is this, was this a real relationship? Because in the car, Tahiri was like, you know, maybe I can get to know you because I don't know who this person is or whatever. Um, and I said from the beginning, if you go go back and watch um, one of the first reviews that I did of this season, I said, Tahiri seems like she's there to do the work like she's really trying to come there and get some tools for her toolbox i felt that from her and hopefully you know she says she got this book coming out um she hasn't talked to vato tony um well you know hazel had her baby shonda is pregnant like that makes me sick to my stomach and like yay for the babies coming into the world great but Tony, you went out and had a baby with an alcoholic. Girl, I can't. After all of that we saw on television, you thought it was a good idea to go and open your legs and, you know, I mean, I like I, I mean, like I said, Tony is not the only one. You understand? I'm not saying well, we could sit here and talk about it, but it makes me sick. It makes me sick. It makes me sick to see Shonda pregnant. Now, what do you think he's going to do? There's no consequence. You were rewarded with a child, my nigga, for your behavior. You were rewarded with a child. Tony is pregnant with, with Corrupt's baby. Um, Shonda is pregnant. I think she just had the baby. And then Hazel E is pregnant. She just had her baby too. Well, we saw that with um when she was with Masika. She already had her baby. I don't know the baby's name or nothing about it, but... And then who else was on the Oh, Medina and Phaedra. They're the only ones because we knew this shit wasn't real from the beginning. From Jump Street, it wasn't real. And Medina had everybody fooled. They thought he was this, this, this sweet person. And Medina might be a sweet person, but you, you, you like to hit women and throw them against 
toilets and all that other stuff. And everybody believed Medina. When when he came out and said that Claudia was doing this, 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 and this, everybody was like, you always believe what the man says. And just like this thing yesterday with um, Beyonce, we posted this thing. I mean, I posted this thing on the community page that said Beyonce and Jay-Z spend $2 million a week on a yacht. A week. And y'all are mad that this woman wants $2 million a month and they are in the same tax bracket. And it was like really some of the weirdest takes on Dr. Dre, hold on to your money and all this other stuff. And my thing is this. If I've invested 24 years into something, I should see something in return for that investment. Why in the fuck would y'all want somebody to leave? A t would you leave 24 years? What would you do on your job? You worked for 24 years and you've, you've given your time, your emotional labor, your physical labor, your, your, your time. You spend more time at work than you do with your family. And after 24 years, they give you $2,000 and say, okay, thanks. No, you'll be fucking mad. It's the same thing. If not deeper, this man is volatile. This man has anger issues. This man beats women. And, and yes, she stayed. A lot of people stay a long time. But when I'm finally sick and tired of your shit and I want to leave, I should see a return. Time is money. Pay the lady. Pay that lady. Pay her. Pay her. Pay her. I don't understand these, these ideas that Beyonce has her own money. She wouldn't sue Jay for $2 million a month if they got a divorce. Dr. Dre's wife is tripping in California. She already gets half. She don't $2 million a month. I guess she don't need $2 million a month. Most of us didn't even know who she was. Their kids are grown. Exactly. You don't even know who this woman was. You didn't even... Well, I knew who she was. But a lot of people didn't know Nicole. She wasn't out. She wasn't around here. She was minding her goddamn business married to a fucking billionaire and now y'all want to now y'all want to count this hoe's money now y'all want to count her money you don't even know who she was and you want to count her money now girl girl i really don't like rich people well billionaires yeah i get it i get it two million dollars beyonce and jay-z spend in a week and you want to know where $9,000, $900,000 in entertainment goes. That's where the fuck it goes. That's where it goes. Hold on. I wanted, to, I, I wanted to read this comment. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Jeff Bezos is different. She worked with him in Amazon. Okay, why are you making excuses? I don't understand. Why are you making excuses to say she doesn't deserve the a return on her investment? If y'all put money constantly putting into and even in stocks, say you want to you want to buy out and you've been putting into it 24 years and you want you want to see a return on your investment. I don't understand where y'all where y'all I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Jeff Bezos is different. She worked with him at, at, at Amazon. Nicole didn't do shit. She was a trophy wife. I said, this is uh, the seductive arts. I said, well, like someone in the comments said, since she was a trophy wife, she that gained him access into spaces he wouldn't have been able to enter. Then she needs to be compensated. And also she worked as a lawyer. And I'm sure she has given him plenty of free legal advice. 24 years is a long time invested to be left with nothing or to significantly decrease your cost of living. It's just bad business. We socialize girls to become women, to marry men who can protect and provide for them. And when he's done or when she's done dealing with his bad behavior, we've been taught to forgive over and over. She's no longer deserving. And we're right back to centering the well-being, oh, his well-being over hers. That is patriarchy. That's patriarchy. Oh, somehow we need to protect Dr. Dre. 
over the woman who has probably dealt with his shit for 24, more than 24 years. They've only been married 24 years. But somehow she needs to leave with what? Nothing? After she's a, grown accustomed to a lifestyle, now she's supposed to be broke down and destitute. She's supposed to go get a townhouse over in Culver City somewhere. Girl, no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not centering his well-being over hers. When you've taught women, you've taught girls to go find them a man to protect and provide. And when he's done, he can just throw her away and bitch you on your own. Here's, a, here's $3. Figure it out, bitch. No, we're not doing that. that. Them days is gone, honey. They're all over. And then somebody else was saying, why are we re re rooting for her? She's light-skinned. Like somebody said, she's light-skinned and got him into places he probably wouldn't have been able to get in. So for that, she needs to be compensated. If you're using this, this light-skinned, light-bright, damn near white woman as your partner, you're using her as a trophy to get and move into spaces that allow you to hobnob with the best of them. With the Jimmy I Veens and shit. You understand? So if she's allowed to bring her around and she's the trophy, god damn it. Can't she get some money for being a fucking trophy? Shit. What's wrong with y'all? I don't understand. Once again, we're centering Dr. Dre's well-being. Oh my god. Do you hold on to your bag, Andre Young. Girl, I'm out of here, y'all. Y'all done pissed me off. No spouse should be owed someone's work earnings by getting half do you want someone to get half of what you created eh, eh, no i don't want nobody to get half of what i created however comma if i if they were investing in me if they were giving me money if they were giving me time if they were giving me if they were helping me yes they deserve money they deserve money for their job that's their role if her job as a wife when she's done with her job as a wife you think that she's not supposed to get compensated she's not supposed not even compensated what she deserves you what the fuck are you going to be married to somebody 24 years for and that when it's over you don't get fucking nothing i want half half you are abusive verbally, physically. You got a lot of money. That's probably part of the reason why she stayed for so goddamn long. But, and then if, think about it. If you married to a billionaire, Mackenzie Bezos, if you married to a billionaire, Nicole Young, and you leave them motherfuckers, something is wrong with their asses. Something is wrong with them. Something is wrong with Jeff Bezos. Something is wrong with Dr. Dre. If a woman, would you think, oh, she's living in the lap of luxury, $2 million a month, and she wants to leave that? Something is wrong with that man. All right, I'm out of here. It's been 50 minutes, and it's time for me to go anyways. Y'all take care of each other and protect your energy. I shouldn't have been yelling like that. My apologies to the new people. Sorry, you know, uh, you know, I was going to say... It, that happens. You know what I'm saying? The diva gets passionate and I get the fire in me and I stop because it doesn't make sense <laughs> because the shit don't make sense to me. And I want, and I don't understand the perspectives. I want to understand the perspectives. I'm not saying y'all are wrong. It just doesn't make sense to me because that's not my perspective. That's not my perspective. That's why you don't, that's why you don't marry, you don't run around with these niggas, broke ass niggas having babies for love and getting married to these broke motherfuckers for love because they really don't think you deserve anything after they done used all the tools that you've acquired from your self-improvement and your self-development and your journey. You find this motherfucker who uses your tools and wants to give them back to you fucked up and not pay you for it. Fuck that. Take care of each other and protect your energy. Peace.